with Safe Routes to School National Partnership. Um, thank you for attending today's Shared Youth Ambassador Highlight Webinar featuring the Ohio Department of Health Creating Healthy Communities Program, our first organizational ambassador uh, for, through our Shared Youth National Task Force. Um, as you guys are all um, logging in right now, and we're going to take some time and go through um, some information about the National Partnership. We are a nonprofit organization who works to, add, to advance um, walking and biking safety to and from schools as well as improve health and well-being for kids of all races, income levels, and abilities, and to foster the creation of healthy communities for everyone. Uh, we do this by um, um, improving quality of life for kids, families, and communities, advancing policy change um, at various governmental levels, catalyzing support for safe, healthy, and active communities, and sharing our deep expertise uh, with local, regional, and state-level advocates and others interested in creating healthy communities themselves. A few housekeeping items right now. To the left of your screen is the GoToWebinar viewer. Um, with, where you can see this presentation. And then to the right is the GoToWebinar control panel, where you can raise your hand, you can ask questions, and select your audio mode. Uh, the control panel will collapse automatically when not in use. So to keep it open, uh, click the View menu at the top of that control panel and uncheck Auto Hide Control Panel in order to keep it you have two options today to listen to us, either computer audio or phone call. So if you have sound problems with one selection, please try the other option. If you are uh, continuing to have trouble, please put a question in the question box if you, are, uh, you can get to that and um, we, can send, we can try to resolve that issue for you. Also, if you have questions, even though everyone is muted today, we would love to hear from you and have you ask questions of our panelists today. So please use the questions box to ask speakers, um, questions for the Q&A portion. So as you get a question, just type it in and we will take them in the order they were received. And um, we'll try to answer everything in the time that we have allowed, but we will be stopping promptly at 2 o'clock Eastern time. Also want to let you know that um, if you want to re-listen to or share this webinar with some of your colleagues, we, it is being recorded and you can find it on the National Partnerships website under the Resources tab under Webinars, those two circled um, areas. And just select that and it will be loaded within the next 48 hours. So today we're here to um, celebrate and learn about some wonderful shared use projects and programs going on in our nation. Um, shared use, which is also called joint use or community use in various parts of our uh, country, refers to two or more entities that share indoor or outdoor spaces for recreational activity. Shared use is most often implemented with schools, community centers, parks, and other community facilities such as pools, athletic fields, libraries, and senior centers. But it can also be implemented at faith-based facilities and properties, civic and neighborhood associations, and even at businesses. The purpose is to provide community access to recreational opportunities where are none are found, where standalone or traditional facilities are unavailable, and to serve community populations that have little or no access to other options. Um, we, I want to thank the foundation, or the foundation for our national shared use support was started by the American Heart Association and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation through the Voices for Healthy Kids program, which aims to help all children achieve a healthy weight through policy change, community engagement, and local action, and to ensure that the places where our children live, learn, and play can make the healthy choice the easy choice. 
the Safe Routes to School National Partnership currently facilitates the National Shared Use Task Force, which is a coalition of national, regional, and state-level organizations dedicated to the advancement of shared use policy and programs, and we promote shared use best practices, success, new approaches, and partnerships through webinars such as this, as well as peer sharing, blog posts, and social media. Uh, we will share more ways to get involved in either the task force or to learn more about shared use at the end of this webinar, but we want to thank the American Heart Association and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation for their support. So that brings us to today's speakers. We've got um, a very robust agenda for today, so I want to first introduce Caitlin Harley. She is the Healthy Places Coordinator at the Ohio Department of Health, and is uh, she is dedicated to, which is a program that is dedicated to healthy eating, active living, and tobacco-free breathing, where Ohioans live, work, and play. As the Healthy Places Coordinator, Kate focuses on the intersection of health and the built environment, emphasizing the role of physical activity in chronic disease prevention. She collaborates at the state level to, to institutionalize health in all policies and consults on the local level to support active living strategies in the Creating Healthy Community, or CHC, 23 counties that are represented in that program. Erin Creedon is the Creating Healthy Communities Coordinator in Marion County. Erin's uh, a registered nurse who has worked in public health for the past 12 years. She served in many capacities within the local health department, including WIC nutritionist, WIC director, public health nurse, and co-leading the 2009 H1N1 campaign. Most recently, Erin has been, has been successfully leading the Creating Healthy Communities project in Marion, Public, in Marion Public Health since 2012. The CHC program in that county under Erin's direction has a highly functioning coalition that focuses on preventing and reducing chronic disease in Marion County and throughout the state. Nicole Smith is a public health consultant for the Create Communities Preventing Chronic Disease Grant at the Ohio Department of Health. In this position, she provides technical assistance and oversees grant administration for the six Communities Preventing Chronic Disease subgrantees. Before joining the Ohio Department of Health earlier this year, she was the Creating Healthy Communities Coordinator with the Licking County Health Department. Which brings me to Carrie McGee. She's listed as Carrie Meyer, but she was recently, um, recently got married, so congratulations, Carrie. She is the current Creating Healthy Communities Coordinator at the Licking County Health Department. As coordinator, she works throughout Licking County community to achieve the CHC vision of making the healthy choice the easy choice through policy, system, and environmental change. Carrie has been a health educator at the Licking County Health Department since 2013 and has coordinated various programs before taking on this role as CHC coordinator. So without further ado, I'll introduce uh, Caitlin Harley, who's going to kick it off for us. Great. Thanks, Kate. Um, and thanks to the National Partnership for selecting our program to be um, a shared use ambassador. Um, as Kate said, I'm with the CHC program here at the Ohio Department of Health, and I focus on active living strategies, including um, shared and open use. So I wanted to share a little bit of background um, about creating healthy communities and talk a little bit about how our program is structured to support shared use. Um, and we are really a, a chronic disease prevention program focused on um, three main risk factors, nutrition, physical activity, and tobacco, like Kate said. Um, and our vision really sums up everything that we do, which is making the healthy choice the easy choice. Um, and I also wanted to share our mission, um, which is a good way to capture the work that we do, um, focused on improving access to and affordability of healthy food, um, increased opportunities for physical activity, and assure tobacco-free living where Ohioans live, work, and play. And also that by implementing sustainable evidence-based strategies, CHC is creating a culture of health. 
Um, so I also wanted to just show um, a visual about you know, what our program looks like geographically around the state. Um, creating healthy communities, we have five state staff um, out of the Ohio Department of Health, and then we fund 23 local county health departments to hire a full-time CHC coordinator. Um, and then we also have a second uh, program at ODH, which we just mentioned briefly as well, um, called um, Communities Preventing Chronic Disease, and they are also working to support shared use work as part of their work plan too. And for any other state health departments on the call, that's our 1422 program. Um, this is a snapshot from an infographic that we made about our Creating Healthy Communities program, and it kind of points out where our work is located on the health impact pyramid. So it's changing the context there in purple. Um, so CHC is focused on population impact. Um, we're focused on policy systems and environmental changes that really change the context in our priority communities around the state. And then this is another image from our infographic that gives you kind of a taste of some of the other strategies that our grant supports as well. And our program has um, several strategies, several evidence-based strategies that we include in our program. Um, and these are just a couple of our evidence-based resources um, that, that we pull to develop these strategy lists. Um, so our go-to resources for the CHC program are really the Institute of Medicine's Accelerating Progress in Obesity Prevention, as well as the CDC's recommended community strategies and measurements to prevent obesity in the U.S. And then also we um, look at the CDC's community guide, which I, I don't have in the image here, um, as well as Robert Wood Johnson Foundation's Advancing Policies to Support Healthy Eating and Active Living Toolkit. Um, so those are really our, our go-to resources. And as a state health department, we recognize shared use as an evidence-based strategy to increase access to physical activity, um, to decrease risk for obesity and chronic disease. Um, and this is really important. And this is shared use is included in our most recent um, state health improvement plan. Um, and is a recommended strategy in our chronic disease section. Um, so this means that it's you know a statewide priority. It helps us um, you know drive funding and maintain this as a you know a sustained effort that is supported at the state level. And then we're also lucky in Ohio that we have some other types of support going on for shared use. As Kate mentioned, um, we're pretty lucky to have a statewide network. Um, in Ohio for several years, um, the Safe Press of School National Partnership um, has a field manager, Kate, in Ohio who facilitates this call, um, and it's great for resource sharing and having a network of people talking about shared use, working on shared use, um, and that's been really great for our state. Um, and then we've also had some advocacy support on more of the legislative side of things that can impact shared use, um, and I think it was I think in 2015, um, there was a House bill um, related to clarifying liability when it comes to working with schools on shared use. Um, so that made it, that helps break down some of the barriers um, for local communities looking to partner with schools on shared use. Um, and there also come, there come a lot of challenges with working on shared use as well. Um, you know, for example, engaging interested parties and in working on shared use. Um, it can be difficult and people can be hesitant to get these kinds of agreements down on paper in sort of a more formal format, um, which from the public health perspective is what we think of as a more as a sustainable approach. Um, there's often it comes up that there might be liability concerns, whether those are real, whether those are perceived. Um, and then, of course, cost is always something that comes up in terms of, um, you know, the cost associated with sharing a space or opening up a space. Um, and then I think, too, just the challenge of changing the status quo. 
um, I think in general with communities, you know, it, it takes time and it takes um, thought and development to create these agreements and sometimes there can be barriers to um, having the time and capacity and expertise to be able to do that. Um, so I, I think those are just sort of some general challenges that come up um, at least with our coordinators here in Ohio working on shared use. But I also wanted to talk about some of our um, approaches for shared use and how we address some of these challenges. Um, so the four approaches that I'm going to talk about today um, are related to some of our resources that we've developed at the state level, um, the way that we fund our program um, to help um, encourage shared use, um, some of our assistance in facilitating dialogues around the state related to shared use, and then also um, our local staff capacity um, to help communities develop these agreements. Um, so the first one is related to resources. Um, so just this past, uh, past two years, we've been working with Tool Design Group to help us create um, lots of different resources, but one of which is a toolkit related to shared and open use agreements um, that our local coordinators can use to really help them you know, educate their communities and their partners about shared use, um, have all the information at their fingertips that they need to talk about, you know, what are the benefits of shared use, why should you be interested, what does it look like, um, stuff like that. Um, and so this toolkit really just helps you walk through the process sort of from education all the way through to implementation um, and, and promotion. So this is an example of um, one of the tools within this uh, toolkit. Um, and it's a snapshot of a PowerPoint template that local coordinators can use um, to share and educate around shared use. And it's really easy to fill in um, some local information um, to personalize it for different audiences. Um, and then, of course, it's it's easy to delete slides if you want to have a more simplified presentation or keep in more slides um, to go a little bit more in depth, just depending on your audience and where you are in the process. Um, we also developed several um, kind of like leave behinds. So um, I think with our program, we do a lot of coalition meetings and our coordinators are involved in lots of things going on in their county. So having resources that you can easily leave with people to, um, if you don't have a lot of time to talk at that moment, they can come back and kind of get the information that they might need when they do have time. And we have fact sheets related to those different audiences. So potentially if you're working with hospitals or with businesses, um, or maybe if you're working with faith-based institutions um, or even with schools, there's some um, personalized information on each of those. Um, and then we also have two others related to like public or private agreements and what those might look like. And then it also helps that our program does have some funds um, that local coordinators could put towards enhancing a space um, to open it up to the community or to enhance um, a shared use agreement. Um, another idea would even be to help with the promotion, maybe additional signage. Um, to promote the community use of the space. Um, so these are just a couple of photos from some of our local communities who've been working on shared, shared use of um, fitness spaces or even some, out, some private outdoor tracks. And then another approach we've had as well, um, we've been able to provide some technical assistance through our contract with Tool Design Group um, to actually provide some facilitation support um, in hosting cross-sector dialogues in communities. So these would be meetings where you can pull together different organizations and stakeholders, um, people that might be involved in shared use agreements, um, to have a kind of community conversation about what shared use is. And it's an opportunity to educate a larger audience. Um, and this is a photo from Summit County um, and they were able to, um, like I said, be able to educate more people at one time, bring together partners to talk about either like the needs they have or maybe the amenities that they have that they could share um, to kind of make those connections right then and there related to shared use and talking through 
together some of the barriers and approaches and opportunities for shared use in their community. And then finally, I think um, you know the ability for our local health departments to have a full-time CHC coordinator who's you know able to play that role of you know educator in the community and also able to provide support and technical assistance in actually developing policy um, or even working through that implementation process can be really helpful. Um, and it, it, I think it can help break down barriers and kind of take off take the workload off of some of the partners who maybe are interested in shared use but aren't really sure um, how to approach it or what the next steps are. Um, and it helps to have you know, somebody there in the community that can really help construct an appropriate agreement for what they're working with that can be sustained in the community. Um, and that's why you know, just talking about how, how um, important this staff capacity is that's why I've also asked two of our local communities to be on the call as well to share some background, some, some of their experience in working on shared use, um, and to talk through some of their successes and challenges. So next up we have Erin Creedon, our coordinator in Marion County. Thanks, Kate. Um, as Kate mentioned, um, I am Erin Creedon and have been involved with the CHC program here in Marion County. Um, since 2012. And I was asked just to kind of give that local perspective on shared use. Um, and so shared use has been a strategy that we have instituted over the past several years. Um, our community has found that shared use allows for us to maximize our assets and to highlight our approach to improving the health of the community. Um, shared use is one of um, those opportunities that you are able to highlight um, partnerships and those partnerships are something that's very strong in our community. So um, this strategy has been an excellent way for us to demonstrate that. Um, my experience with shared use or open use agreements began with food access strategies in our faith-based community. Um, with the development of our community gardens. And as Kate mentioned, CHC provides funding um, for some of those built environment um, improvements. So this has been an excellent way um, to get into some of those um, hard to reach populations or sectors. Um, so that has been an excellent opportunity for us here in Marion County. Um, this strategy, strategy appealed not only to public health, but really resonated with our faith-based community. Um, one of the things that consistently came out from speaking with our faith-based um, community was that they were constantly looking for opportunities to connect and outreach to the community. So working on shared and open use agreements just seemed um, like a win-win for all of us. Um, prior to um, the resources and the education um, that Ohio Department of Health provided us, our program and the local health department were accustomed to drafting and implementing um, MOUs or Memorandum of Understanding. So those same concepts just really carried over to um, drafting those shared use agreements. And if you could advance the slide. Oh, funny little head. So, um, like I mentioned, one of our first um, shared use came from a North End community church here in Marion City. And churches are typically a place where the doors always seem open, and this local church just took that to the next level by offering the use of their land for a community garden. Um, this church is located in an area of need um, that was identified by the USDA as being food insecure and has a poverty rate at nearly 50%. The initial strategy was um, presented to the leadership team at this church and um, coming from public health, it was to improve food access. But ultimately, shared use allowed for this this economic disadvantaged church to be part of the community solution. 
Um, they were able to highlight their assets of land space and um, to engage in the communities um, surrounding them. In addition to the garden space, they have also opened their space for fitness activities, um, nutrition education. And I think important to note, as Kate mentioned in some of the challenges, um, you know, we had in our agreement established um, a reimbursement for the use of water. Um, however, the church reported that there was little to minimal increase in the cost. So that um, actually the need to reimburse them was waived. Um, next slide, please. Another food access example of shared use was through the partnership between our local YMCA and the Marion County um, Farm Bureau in 2015. Um, that year we worked on establishing um, an acre of sweet corn um, on the YMCA property. And this strategy, as previously mentioned, was utilized to improve food access, but also there was um, a desire with the local Farm Bureau to increase um, awareness of our farmers and local fruit food production. Um, so ultimately, this vacant land space at the YMCA was repurposed and to meet a community need. A shared use agreement um, was established between um, the YMCA, and we were strategic with how we drafted that agreement and that it was a short term, just um, a few months during that growing season so that if for some reason um, this agreement did not work out or was unsuccessful, that it could be terminated without any problem. Um, actually, quite the opposite occurred. Um, we had such a positive outcome um, that we did do it again the, the next year. Um, and just as a side note, over 6,000 ears of corn were administered to local um, food pantries, community serving agencies, and um, the YMCA allowed all community residents, residents to harvest this produce. Next slide, please. Lastly, another food access example um, that I would like to present on is through a partnership between um, our National Association of Chronic Disease Directors and several other key stakeholders here in Marion County. Marion County was one of 10 communities um, recently across the nation to be awarded a disability inclusion grant. And this award focuses um, on policy system environmental change with um, an emphasis on disability inclusion. Um, to provide you some reference, um, Marion County is a community in which about 17% of our residents um, are food insecure, and another 17% of our population is living with a disability. So in an effort to mitigate those health needs, um, and we also had that secondary goal of community inclusion as a goal, Marion County launched a mobile produce pantry in 2016. Um, this was a true partnership between our local school systems, our hospital system, private donors, our Marion County Board of Developmental Disabilities, the local health department. Um, all these partners came together to, to realize that um, healthy food access um, touches all different sectors. So with this collaborative approach um, in mind, we developed a mobile produce pantry um, and identified that we were in need of a facility to house six to 9,000 pounds of produce. And this is where the shared use um, came in. Marion City Schools, our largest school system here in the community, um, allowed us to come in during school hours and use their facility for um, packaging and repurposing this produce to get back into the community. Next slide, please. Early in the presentation, I mentioned that we were unable to um, conduct our corn patch this year, and this was actually due to a multi-use trail construction project at the Marion Family YMCA. 
and kind of just building from the success um, with the open use um, or open use agreement with the corn patch, the YMCA decided to um, open and launch a new track. And this track is open to the public and an agreement was signed by the YMCA director to allow all community residents to use this space and not only use this space to, but to use their restroom facilities as well during um, the track hours. Uh, I, in Kate's previous slides, we saw uh, pictures of signage and CHC funds um, help to um, promote that material and provide users of the trail expectations um, on, on trail use. Um, in addition to um, signage, ODH um, developed those toolkits and that was an opportunity for us to um, definitely educate the why, but also other coalition members on um, shared use. Next slide, please. Thank you. I think some of the takeaways on shared use um, are in, in conversations we tend to um, highlight or talk about the needs. Um, you know, we conduct needs assessments, we identify gaps in our plans and collect data that demonstrates the need for our work. Next slide, please. But shared use really allows us to um, look at our partners as equal contributors to this community solution and that not necessarily we're not asking for um, funding, but maybe just to relook at the use of our spaces and to be good stewards of, of that space and those resources that already exist. Next slide, please. Also, as I mentioned earlier, um, it was an excellent way to engage um, our faith-based as they were already looking for ways to touch the community. Um, you know, the benefits of shared and open youth are multifaceted. And um, that's all I have today. And with that, I'm going to have Nicole and Carrie discuss their work at Licking County. Hello, good afternoon everybody. Um, this is Nicole and as Kate mentioned at the beginning, I am currently with the Ohio Department of Health but was previously the Creating Healthy Communities Coordinator um, with Licking County when we kind of got this um, shared use project underway. So I am going to give some background on a survey we conducted and then I'll turn it over to Carrie to kind of share um, what she's doing to follow up and um, share the results of the survey as well. So we, um, starting in 2016, we surveyed 57 public and private schools in Licking County. Um, the survey that we used is the same survey that is in the Meeting in the Box Toolkit that Kate mentioned earlier in her presentation. Um, the survey template was originally adapted from a survey that the Tennessee Parks and Recreation Department used to assess shared use policies across all of the school districts in their state. And a representative from Tennessee shared information about the survey on one of the shared use action team calls. And because there are so many school districts here in Ohio, um, the action team wanted to pilot the survey in one county or community. And Licking County was in the very early stages of working to advance shared use at that time. So we volunteered to pilot this survey in our county. Um, and we used it primarily as a data gathering tool and really to set our baseline um, because as I mentioned, this was we really had not done much work in um, shared use at all in our county and didn't have a grasp on what was already being done. So the survey looked at the type of shared and open use agreements that were already existing in the county on the individual school level. So although we found that these decisions were usually dictated um, by a district level policy, it really did vary from district to district. And we also wanted to know which specific facilities at each school 
were or were not being um, utilized already. So the survey asked each school um, also about the barriers to engaging in shared or open use and also the resources they would need to develop shared use agreements or to support their already existing agreements. And um, while, we, while the survey originally came from Tennessee, we of course adapted the questions for our needs. And so for example, um, the toolkit was kind of in the early stages of being developed at that time and we knew that there were some talks about um, fact sheets or funding matrixes or other things that could be developed to um, support shared use in Ohio. And so we included a lot of those as options um, that schools could select for the resources that they would need to support their work. And then eventually we wanted to create a map to show the types of shared use, um, shared in, and open use that were already available in the county including the facilities available at each of the schools. And we were actually working on a separate map in Licking County at the time um, that would show parks, recreation centers, other physical activity opportunities. So we thought that this shared use map could um, really just complement what we were doing there. So, um, Again, this was before the toolkit was drafted. So we drafted our own talking points and email templates so that health department staff and interns could help to distribute the survey and collect responses. The survey was electronic, so email was our primary um, method of communication and distribution for the survey, but we did also make follow-up um, phone calls to the schools and in some cases followed up in person. We were also fortunate that the Licking County Health Department has very good relationships with a lot of the schools in the county, um, so we were able to utilize those relationships to get a higher response rate. Several of the health educators teach a third grade wellness program in almost all of the elementary schools in the county, so they were able to follow up with elementary principals in person and then the environmental health director uh, for the health department also has a good relationship with the superintendents in the county um, because of food service inspections. So he sent the survey link out to the superintendents and asked them to distribute to their principals as well. And we saw the highest response rate from this. So I am going to turn it over to Carrie to share the results. All right, um, I'm just going to go over briefly some of what we found from doing the surveys. Um, as Nicole mentioned, it did take us a while to get the surveys back. I think it took us about a school year and a half to get all of them back. And um, as she mentioned, we used, utilized our environmental health director who really improved our return rate and we were able to start kind of compiling the results at that point. Um, we did find from the surveys that the majority of the schools in our county do have some form of a formal or written agreement in place um, outlining use of their facilities. And then we found that there are a few that still have just a verbal or open use agreement that will allow access to facilities such as playground or track, gym, things like that. And um, this kind of helped us because we would be able to respond back in our follow-up um, with a formal agreement, you know, they have something already um, written and it's a legal document setting forth the terms and conditions. So for those folks who don't have a formal agreement, you know, we really try to encourage them um, to do so so that they would have something in writing in case anything did happen because um, informal agreements are pretty much based on just historical practice of what's been done before. Um, we also asked them to identify their greatest challenges that they experience with the agreements, as well as helpful resources we could provide to them. Um, and I think Nicole had mentioned that, and Caitlin shared some of those resources in her slides. Um, we also received copies of um, their shared use agreements um, from the different schools, um, and we reviewed those agreements looking for a particular language um, in those so that when we did our follow-up, 
emails, we could pull those things out. Um, all right, so then some of the challenges that resulted out of this survey, um, we saw the highest, or the biggest challenge, I guess, was um, scheduling and high demand, too many requests. Um, so for this, you know, we would just suggest having a formal process for requesting the spaces. Um, and some schools may just be really busy, and that may be the only place in their community where people can host different types of community events um, or ha are the only space in the community for sports. Um, so that just kind of takes some organization and I think time management, but um, we can offer kind of our assistance with that. Um, facility maintenance, wear and tear, liability, um, which schools are covered under the house bill for liability and often will have a statement at the end of their shared use agreement that um, no liability shall attach to this district. So that's often at the end of their agreements. Um, and then fees is another one that sometimes can be tricky. Um, but again, when we follow up with the schools, we try to address some solutions to these challenges with the resources that we find in the toolkit. Um, we are also able to provide them with some examples from other schools in Ohio that um, have similar shared use agreements of various kinds that cover you know, various areas that they're concerned about. So it's nice that we can um, provide them some actual examples. Um, and again, with the resources requested, um, most of them were interested in more resources, whether they had a formal agreement in place or not. Um, but these are the types of things that we have in the um, meeting in a box toolkit that Caitlin mentioned. and. Um, so we were just able to pull things out of that and send in. Also, the um, shared use action team has some materials that we're able to forward on. Um, our biggest challenge on our end is that schools are always busy, especially the people that make these important decisions. Um, so you know, it just never really seems like there's this great window of opportunity to jump in and um, get things done with the school administrators. And of course, you know they have to take it to higher ups to get things approved. So um, we really try to stress that whole um, idea that we are there to help them and kind of do the legwork um, with our technical assistance and providing the resources. And it's done for free. So we kind of take the pressure of having to take extra time and money um, from them. And we hope that this will interest them more if they know they don't have to you know, have excess expenses. Um, to work on something like this and also stressing, you know, that it is um, important to their community to provide this space, um, you know, just showcasing that they can open their doors and um, make more space for people to play and exercise and just kind of contributing to the wellness of their community. Um, some of the agreements that we did review only needed a few um, slight changes to be more complete and include, um, you know, physical activity. Um, so those ones we could, you know, follow up with and just say, you know, we just need to change a simple word. So here's an example. Um, example one shows the uses of the, the facilities listed and recreation isn't one of those. And we want recreation to be included because it emphasizes that this is going to be made accessible to our community for purposes of physical, related to physical activity. So in example two, they specifically list recreational and they even expand upon that to say indoor, outdoor games, the physical activities, organized or un unorganized um, exercise, relaxation, diversion, sport, or pleasure. So it can simply be just adding that little tidbit into their um, agreement and making it more inclusive for that. Um, and then real quick, you know, we wanted to kind of look beyond our school districts and, and open this up to our faith-based organizations because they are a, a part of our community and um, it does make sense to, you know, go to them because they often have a desire to engage with the community and want to have that community outreach. 
Um, so we sent the same survey. We just made a few modifications to make it applicable to faith-based organizations versus a school. And um, we sent it to 39 faith-based organizations, um, but we only have received five back. Um, and out of those five, two have a formal written shared use agreement. Three um, is informal. Um, a lot of the uses that they open up are like gymnasium, basketball courts, um, some listed cafeterias and classrooms. Um, they didn't really seem to have many issues with opening their doors to the community. I think it's more of they're just not really aware of how to incorporate a shared use agreement or that that is even a thing. So we're still continuing to work on this one. Um, and, and we sent the survey out twice. We've had some emails kick back. So it's kind of fighting, finding the updated contacts for this one. But um, it's part of our work for next year as well. So uh, we're hoping to get some more positive results with the faith-based organizations here in Licking County. And that is all I have. Great. And then this is Kate Harley again with ODH, and I just wanted to wrap up with a couple of our resources, which I've talked a lot about today, um, but they can be found on our website um, for anybody to utilize. Um, there's a tab on our Creating Healthy Communities webpage um, called, yes, yeah, Shared and Open Use Agreement. Um, and if you need any of the PowerPoint presentation slides, um, you can just email me those and I can share those slides with you if you're interested. And I also wanted to mention that on our web page, um, we do a success story for our whole program on an annual basis. So this is just our way of capturing, you know, all the successes that have happened within the year to share them with partners. Um, in 2014, we had a success story, you know, all about shared use from Columbus, um, and they were um, actually a shared use ambassador as well last year, I think. Um, but if you're interested in looking through any of our success stories, they are also available on our webpage. And our most recent rendition of our success story includes this page um, showing uh, some of our 2016 local impact. Um, so we go through uh, a local evaluation process and we um, wrap it up into a, a larger kind of statewide analysis of strategies that have been accomplished um, and you know, trying to measure our impact and reach around the state, um, looking at the number of Ohioans impacted by our work. Um, so you can see in the blue, in the active living, we've included shared use agreements in that as well. And I think all of us are happy to take any questions from the audience. Uh, this is Kate Nunning. I want to thank all of our speakers for that really interesting um, uh, information regarding shared use, not just from the, the state level, but also uh, some interesting programs that are happening at the local level. Um, we are open for questions now. We do have a couple in the questions box. Our first one um, from Holly is, um, since approaches were countywide, were there districts and schools that were urban schools that participated? The pictures show in the presentation seems all rural up to this point. Um, and so I guess the question is for all of you, including Kate, are there other communities within the CHC or CPCD program that are more urban? And ha do you have a quick story about how shared use is being applied in those areas? Yeah. Are there were there any urban areas in Licking County? Um, the city of Newark is our still probably is not considered really mm -hmm. urban, so okay. um, it's a smaller city. So, in terms of other places around the state, um, I know that in Dayton, and Kate, maybe you know about this too. I'm pretty sure that there, the Dayton public schools are all have a really great shared use policy. Um, and are open to the public. Um, we've had our coordinator up in Cuyahoga County has done some shared use work um, also. I think in East Cleveland, um, working to open up some, I think there was a track, one of those photos with the signage was from a track, um, and partnering with a couple different um, 
like after school type programs um, on sharing space as well and a, and a fitness center at a uh, faith base at a church. Yeah. I, I do want to mention you had, you had just mentioned the Columbus shared use um, success that resulted in their ambassadorship in our first year. And yeah. That was very unusual, and that was very that was done through a hospital, and it was using some of their uh, community space to engage with their local community in a very low income depressed area that their hospital was um, is is currently located in, and that has just been a huge success in engaging and creating healthier options, um, education, physical activity. Um, across the spectrum in that neighborhood. So um, you yeah. can read about that ambassador program not only through um, the Ohio Department of Health success stories, but also on uh, the National Partnership Ambassador website. Yeah, thanks for adding that. Okay. Ooh, had a little reverb there. Okay, so um, we have another question for Carrie. Um, how does a reservation system affect youth in school facilities? Um, a reservation system in terms of the issue with kind of scheduling and staff, or like scheduling and kind of making it available, I'm assuming is what that means. Um, well, I think it's when they open the gym for sporting activities or if someone's going to come in and host a class and they have that kind of a shared use agreement maybe with um, a Zumba instructor to come in and teach a Zumba class on Saturday mornings, um, that's where they have to create some type of schedule so that if they're having things that are organized like that and they're specific, then they can schedule around that, whereas if they were just saying, you know, our, our school gym is open during non-school hours, anyone can come in and use it, they wouldn't really have to schedule around that. So it would be something that would be more organized and specific to where they would need to create those types of schedules. And for communities that um, have a lot of traffic and are being used by a lot of different groups too, I think having that reservation system is helpful in promoting events as well. Um, because if you are doing structure. Kate oh. Harley, you sound like a robot. Um, <coughs> jiggling your... Yeah, cord would be. Make you... Oh, can you hear me now? You still sounding like RoboCop. Can you hear me now? Yep, but you still sound like RoboCop. <laughs> still sound a little robotic. Okay. Well, then never mind. Is it just me? Maybe I'm the only one hearing you that way. <laughs> yeah, so um, I had a question for Aaron which was, um, you know, I noticed your shared use agreements um, were primarily driven through food access approaches, but did you also incorporate um, some physical activity benefits into those food access approaches? Yeah, um, in our final evaluations, um, we did um, evaluate um, the the users on whether how how they transported to the community garden whether they walked biked did it increase their their personal physical activity or their family so we did look at that and then obviously some of we expanded um, some of our open use agreements with um, the addition of the community track there at the the YMCA We've got about, ooh, three or four minutes left. Um, I did want to clarify that um, Casey Smith from Montgomery County in Ohio said that most of Montgomery County is urban and that all districts but one in the county, I assume meaning school districts here, have shared use agreements in place. So um, it is a tool that's being used um, in urban communities to create those spaces for physical activity as well as for other engagement. Um, I just wanted to, to throw that out there when we were talking about urban uh, programs. Um, 
still looking. We, uh, I did have one last question that's kind of an overarching question for everyone is that um, this, the, the value from the local communities, what is the value of the support at the state level for the resources that you guys all touched upon and talked about that um, ODH does promote? And then conversely, from the state level, how does this help fulfill goals for you as a state entity in some of these programs? I can speak on the local level. Um, the the toolkit um, was really helpful in educating our community partners and that we had um, kind of common language across the state, um, best practices um, and things to share. Um, it was just kind of an opportunity for us to be all on the same page. Um, so I thought that those, that toolkit, like I said, the sample, the PowerPoint came in very um, hand, handy in educating our coalition members. I would add to that that um, having the state, at the state level, having the support through the House bill that took, took the liability from schools if they open their doors is huge because that's often the first concern. Um, when you want to go in and use space at a school. And like I said, I think that's in a lot of their um, policies now at the end. It states that the no liability should be, shall be applied to the school district. So they feel more protected and reassured that, you know, they have something there supporting them um, when we're asking them to kind of take this chance of, you know, opening their doors to various um, things that could go on in the community. We do have one last question in the questions box. Are the shared use agreements between other large government agencies or are they between small CBOs, which I'm guessing that means community-based organizations? It sounded to me as though most of the local programs were working directly with more with smaller um, community-based organizations. For example, um, you know the YMCA at the local level and the the, the faith-based organizations and the schools, which are very local in nature. Does that sound fair? Yeah, I would say it's more the local level. We had an example from last year um, in Buckeye Lake. We had the um, youth association out there kind of set up a shared youth contract with someone to come in and teach Tai Chi to some of the senior residents out there. So it was just an example of kind of pairing that up, but it was more of the local level. Great. Okay. Well, we have reached almost the top of the hour. I want to thank all of our speakers from uh, the Ohio Department of Health, Marion Public Health, and Licking County Health Department for um, being our presenters today. I wanted to um, give you guys um, some follow-up on how you can make a splash. I had to get a pool picture in here because it's the end of summer on uh, shared use in your communities, on um, finding more resources on committing your communities and organizations to shared use. First, there is a national shared use resolution that organizations and individuals can sign on to. Um, it is located at the website listed. Um, share your shared use success story. We have a brand new hot off the press uh, success story web page where you can walk through some questions and uh, share your success story with um, the national task force, and then you know, hopefully, we will be we will contact you back about you know sharing that on a more a, on a larger scale. Um, there is a shared use Google listserv that you can join at that list where you can ask questions of other 
um, folks across the country about shared use and you know some of the solutions they have to problems you may have or successes or resources that you have found. And then on the resource front, Visiting the Shared Use Clearinghouse that's on the National Partnerships website, if you use the advanced search tool, you can search for a number of the resources that, have, um, that are out there nationally that help implement shared use, whether it's a policy, an agreement, a fact sheet, info, infographics. Um, there's a lot of resources out there. And if you have a shared use resource, a fact sheet, a policy, an agreement that you'd like to share at the national level, please feel free to email me and we will see it gets added to the clearinghouse. I also want to remind you guys that this webinar is being recorded and that um, it will be uploaded to our website in the next 48 hours. Um, you will get a link to it uh, via our follow-up email, so be on the lookout for it, share it with others that might be interested. And there will also be a follow-up survey. We would love to hear your feedback on today's webinar and um, so that we can continue to improve this information. Thank you all for joining us. It is the top of the hour. Have a great day.